Hi, and welcome to Half Moon Tech Labs. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, so we're gonna to try to make up for that today. Uh, been busy with summer, like the summer do here. Um, anyway, uh, what I wanna to do today is build a pneumatic cannon. Uh, this is basically an air launcher type system, uh, just using compressed air, uh, unlike a potato gun, which uses, you know, usually has a fuel and, and an igniter. Uh, those can be unpredictable as far as the amount of energy it delivers each time when you try to shoot something. So if you're trying to really dial in a shot and put a projectile, uh, like what I'm doing is using it to launch a little piece of PVC uh, tube with end caps on it with a little weight inside and a string attached. And I'm, and I'm firing that uh, using it like a, an air rifle, uh, firing it over the top of a tree or over the top of a limb of a tree to pull a string through so that I can then pull my antenna wires up. Um, now, using it with compressed air, uh, it's far safer than using a fuel. Uh, like I said, you can dial in the amount of energy you put into each shot very precisely because you have control over how much pressure you preload the chamber with. Uh, and uh, other than that, I'd like to get to building this and see how it works. Uh, so let's take a look at all the fittings I picked up that are on the bench. And uh, we'll start cutting and gluing and uh, see what we come up with. Here we go. All right, so we have all the fittings laid out here. And let's go through what, what we have uh, for the whole bill of materials here. So first off, just a quick explanation. There's going to be two barrels that are in parallel. They're going to be going this way. Uh, this is going to be on the end of the assembly. The barrels are both going to go this direction. The top barrel will be the one that the projectile is fired from. The bottom barrel that's going in the same direction is actually going to come up and turn around through these fittings. And that's going to, that's going to provide our air chamber with this cap on the end. So we're going to have a piece of two inch PVC about five feet long along the bottom, give or take. Um, and that's going to serve as our uh, air storage tank. And uh, again, these are all pressure rated uh, fittings. I can't, um, I can't say that enough. You have to make sure that you get the pressure rated ones. Some say not intended for pressure use. Others say that they are pressure rated. So make sure that any PVC you use, even the smallest pieces, they have to make, you have to make sure that, uh, especially schedule 40, that you're using the pressure rated ones and you properly prime it and glue it. Okay, that said, that disclaimer out of the way, uh, let's get to what we have here. So, um, Going from uh, right to left, if you will, um, we have, this is a shark bite uh, pressure test kit. These are pretty cheap, but it's a, I thought it was a pretty cool device. It's an integrated thing. So plumbers use this, they'll screw it onto a system that they wanna do a pressure decay uh, leak test on. They'll charge the system with air, uh, let it sit there for a while and, and make sure that the uh, reading doesn't, you know, the pressure reading doesn't drop. So, but for our purposes, it's nice because it's a Schrader valve. There's a three quarter inch threaded connection and there's an integrated pressure gauge, which is cool. Uh, then we have a three quarter inch uh, close nipple uh, that'll have to be taped. Uh, that's going to go into the three quarter inch threaded bushing that terminates at a two inch socket connection. That's gonna go into our pressure rated two inch T. We have a um, 90 degree elbow here. This is a street type elbow, meaning that it has a um, it has a socket on one side and what's called the spigot uh, on the other side. And that's, that's to save, um, it's just gonna take up a little less space than if I tried to do this with, with, uh, with another elbow. Uh, so anyway, so that's gonna go in there. And then on the other side of the T, we have a two inch to one inch threaded, okay? And we're going to have a one inch close nipple, Teflon taped and Screwed in there. We'll assemble all this properly here shortly. Then we have our uh, Rainbird. Uh, they, they, there's a few different places that make this Orbit Rainbird, but uh, this is a one inch sprinkler valve with a 24 volt AC coil on it. Uh, you can fire these with DC, just with a pulse of DC. Uh, you sh shouldn't go up to 24 volts. So usually what people do when they're doing projects like this is they use two nine volt batteries in series. 18 volts get you close enough to actuate the solenoid and that will fire this. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm, I would rather have the electronic ignition versus the pneumatic fired version, which you see some, some designs use. But anyway, that's gonna go like this. And then we've got another one inch close nipple on this side. That's going to go in there. Teflon tape, of course, there we go. And then on the other side, we've got a another bushing. This is the uh, one inch to one and a quarter. 
and that's going to go like so. And then on this side, we have a just a union fitting, again, pressure rated. That's going to allow us to go one and a quarter inches out. Now, some people right here, um, and I'm thinking about, I may, I may do this uh, if I build another one in the future. I could actually change this uh, to a, a socket adapter that uh, lets me uh, have interchangeable barrels. I did that with a potato gun design years ago. It actually worked out quite well. So I had interchangeable barrels of different sizes for different types of projectiles. For my purpose, I'm going to use it to shoot an antenna wire up in a tree uh, or a piece of string rather so I can pull the wire up through. And um, so for my purposes, this is going to work fine. But anyway, once we get it all, all in here, it's going to look something like this. Okay, this is just really rough, but um, so without everything uh, glued and screwed and everything, this is kind of roughly what it's going to look like. And you're going to have a, a two inch barrel that goes in this direction with an end cap, two inch pressure rated end cap on it. So that's going to be our air chamber here. And then our projectile barrel is here. Okay, enough talking. Let's get to uh, cutting and gluing and, and screwing this thing together and see what we come up with. All right, let's start with this guy. There's our valve assembly. Okay, everything that needs to be screwed in is screwed in. Now, let's get to gluing. That'll be for the projectiles. Okay, now onto the barrel.
making sure to hold this for a good 30 seconds plus on every single one of these. I don't want any leaks. I want it to be super strong. Okay, thought about this and I wanted to make sure that I actually put the, um, this is the spigot connection and this is the socket side of this uh, Street 90. And I want to put these together first and then I'll put this on the, on the um, launcher last. And the reason why I'm going to do that is it'll give me a one last attempt at making sure that the two barrels are completely parallel when I, when I cinch it up. So you know how when you put PVC together, you have to twist and then hold. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to put this on and find out I'm, I'm a couple degrees off uh, and find out after it's set up. So I'm going to actually do my last fitting so I can line the pipes up exactly and then let it cure like that. So anyway, let's go. Okay, we'll let that set up and then we'll move to the next piece. Okay, and next to the last uh, solvent bond we have to do is we're going to get this in. We're going to uh, do the same treatment and then as I rotate this, I'm going to make sure that these two barrels are completely parallel. And on my final twist, when I twist and hold it for the solvent to set up, um, or for the glue to set up, I want to make sure that these barrels are completely parallel at that point. So that's why I'm doing it in the order I'm doing it. Again, here we go. Beauty. Okay, now. Yeah. Quickly get these things assembled. I'm going to probably have to do this off camera. And finally, the end cap for the two inch air chamber. Hold that for 30 seconds and see what we have. All right, well, there we go. Now we've got everything glued and screwed and we've got these two barrels in parallel. This is the chamber, the fat one. The other one's the uh, projectile barrel. They are nice and true and straight. And the only thing I have to do now is uh, come up with a means of securing these two so they don't rattle around because we do have a gap between the two barrels. So uh, I'm going to come up with a way to secure these two, and then um, that'll stop them from flopping around when it uh, discharges. But uh, anyway, we're going to give this a few hours to cure, and uh, we'll do a pressure test on it, make sure we don't have any leaks, and then we'll uh, get on to testing. Be back shortly. Okay, to get these uh, barrels finished up so that they don't um, flex and clack into one another when it's discharging, uh, I wanted to make a couple of retainers. And so I, I had some of this uh, spare PVC board laying around, uh, some scrap uh, PVC board. I basically just uh, uh, made this little cutout like this uh, to accommodate the inch and a quarter and the two inch. Uh, intentionally left these little cutouts like this, and you'll see why in just a second. I've made two of these, by the way. 
Let's take a look. Okay, so here you can see we already have one clamp in place here. And um, we're going to position that about uh, a third the way up the barrel. This one's going to be on the end. The valve provides the other attachment point. Uh, once these are, or once these braces are in place and secured to these pipes, it'll stop them from moving around. When we discharge, it'll be a nice solid assembly. So to get this on, I made this uh, this particular geometry for a reason. It's so that I could slide it onto the pipe like so, flex it out just a bit snap it together and there we go so we're gonna have a brace here a brace here and then the other attachment point again is at the valve itself so I'm going to secure these get them all buttoned up this will now be one continuous piece that's solid and uh, then we'll be able to do a leak test and test firing of this we'll see how it works okay we're back we've let the glue dry for a few hours and uh, before we get uh, too crazy here, I need to build the firing mechanism. So we need to take the uh, the nine volt battery circuit that we're going to use to fire this. And I'm going to make a I'm going to take this little project box, and um, we're going to put a little uh, arming switch and a fire switch on it, and a little place to house the battery. We'll attach that over here somewhere, and then uh, we'll get it all wired up and start to test it. Um, thought I'd mention that. Um, uh, the clamps I came up with to keep the barrels separated and, and stable actually worked really well. Uh, last minute decision here to actually split this clamp I made down the middle and leave a gap in there intentionally. And then I just passed some quarter 20 bolts uh, through there with, uh, with shake proof nuts and washers on there. So now uh, uh, it's actually super solid. Um, it's not coming apart. It's not going to rattle when you fire it and uh, it just feels mechanically solid. Looks good. So let's get to building this little uh, uh, firing circuit and uh, we'll, we'll uh, put it on there and um, see how it works. All right, so we're going to build the firing circuit next. Um, here's the hole um, that I drilled for the switches here, here, and then the grommet's going to pass through the bottom. Uh, so let's actually, uh, so I've already got the red switch mounted. That's going to be our fire button, our push button right there. And this little plastic pro project box, um, the hole in the bottom is going to be for this grommet. This is what the coil wires from the sprinkler valve will pass through. Let's put that in. There we go. Place for the wires to pass through on the bottom. Uh, this is going to be the arming switch. This little toggle will be on the side. We want to make sure that we flip it up to arm it. Yes, up to arm it this way. So let's uh, let's do that. All right. And we're going to do a quick test here. Battery on. Nothing happens because the arming switch is off. Arming switch. There we go. Nice. Okay. Let's put this baby together. Nice. Okay, we're gonna neaten up this wiring, mount this, and uh, go give it a try. All right, so we're back. We have our firing mechanism made here. We have an arming switch. We have a fire switch that's wired up to the sprinkler dump valve. And uh, I've already pressure tested it. There's no leaks, works good. Uh, let's charge this thing up, 
it, uh, I will put 50 PSI in it and we'll see how she does. Arming switch off. That way we don't accidentally hit a button and fire while we're filling. And we'll go to about 50, give or tank. Here we go, 50 PSI. We're gonna load the projectile. This is empty right now, but I'll probably put a little sand in this, put an eye hook on the end, and that's what I'll use to shoot um, wires into the uh, trees when I put up my antennas. There we go, went all the way to the bottom. Let's head over here. We're just going to shoot it straight up. Okay. We're going to arm. Fire switch is active. Here we go. And fire in the hole. Oh my God. That is really high. <laughs> Arms. Fire in the hole. Woo! Oh, oh my God. <laughs> uh, boom. Perfect. So <laughs> that worked fantastic. I can't wait to shoot a wire into a tree now. There's a little bit of pressure left in there. Wow, that works great. Thanks for tuning in to Half Moon Tech Labs. We'll catch you later.